Go right. Jack. Hey everybody, we got a special guest with us today. Uh, retired SEAL Will Bronham. Uh, spent 26 years in the Navy, uh, working in Naval Special Warfare, that's the SEAL teams. Uh, he started at um, SEAL Delivery Team too. SEAL Delivery Team, they deal with wet uh, submersibles, so kind of like the underwater little submarines. Uh, he was the sniper instructor. Uh, he spent time at SEAL Team 10, um, worked at WARCOM in acquisitions. WARCOM is uh, our headquarters command for all of Naval Special Warfare. Uh, after that, he went to SEAL Delivery uh, Team 1 in Hawaii. And then he finished with Naval Special Warfare Group 3. Uh, and that's uh, Group 3's overall in charge for all undersea warfare for Naval Special Warfare. So he's not just a, uh, a SEAL in the traditional sense, but he's also done all this stuff with our very, very niche specialized mission uh, underwater. So the SEAL delivery team mission as well. Uh, retired as one of our experts in that world. And uh, Will, glad to have you on with us, man. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Was I supposed to say something after that? <laughs> I thought Stephen was going to jump in. Oh, at that check. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're we're, uh, we're doing a very smooth uh, podcast here of some sort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so you retired on Oahu. I did, uh, yes. Well, and then, um, so you went from, where Where did you grow up? I, I grew up in uh, Meridian, Mississippi. There's Mississippi. not a lot of water around there. Got it. Well, now you got it all around. And you you surf, you, what other things do you do on the water? Uh, mostly I surf, but I surf on a, on a stand-up paddleboard. Okay. Um, and the, but you know, the traditional stand up paddle boards that you might think of, I don't use those. I use uh, much more of a surf style, like a more high performance surf style. It's, it's so uh, high performance, it barely floats me. Like wow. generally when you think about a, a stand up paddle board, you're like this big boat board out in the water and you have the whole family on it paddling around. Not mine. You can. I. It barely holds me up. So, um, so it, it's uh, it's a little more challenging than. Uh, so you always got to keep moving. In other words. Yeah, you pretty much have to either be sitting down and waiting for a wave with all the other surfers, or up and and moving. Because if I stop paddling, I'm gonna fall in the water. Got it. And and in this uh, quarantine, lockdown, shelter in place. Uh, scenario that we have i mean are we are you allowed to go surf and go on the beach on oahu nowadays um not i don't think i'm allowed to be on the beach or really hang out on the beach but uh um it's you know there's a transition between the car and getting in the water so yeah. if you move quickly no one can catch you Gosh. um and maybe they wait for you to come out of the water who knows but uh there hasn't been any any major issues uh right now yeah <laughs> wow wow do you ever i know you're a katsu user and actually a, a what we call a master specialist do you ever do katsu on the beach or in the water or i i don't do katsu in the water but one of the things that i do before you know going surfing is that i know you're not supposed to do this but um when i get up in the morning especially if it's super early in the morning and my body hasn't really warmed up i'll put the bands on and just start running cycles, you know, while I make my coffee and then I get in the car and I have cycles running all the way to till I get in the water, all on my legs. Um, really just to get my legs warmed up and, you know, the blood flowing because like I said, I'm on this teeny tiny board that barely holds my 200 pounds out of the water. And, you know, as soon as I stand up on the thing, I have to start working right away. Like my legs, like balance has to be perfect. Everything has to be, you know, pretty dialed. So um, I have found that if I don't use katsu on the way to the to the beach or in the morning prior to going, um, my performance is not as good as what it would be or what it is when I use katsu on the way in. It takes me much longer to get warmed up in the water and kind of get my balance and things like that. Wow, nice. About how you do it for five minutes, ten minutes. What what do you what do you estimate? No, I'll run cycles for probably. Um, from the time I get up, 
make coffee and get on. It's I'm, I'm about 15 to 20 minutes, depending where I surf from, from the North shore of Oahu. So, um, but I, you know, I'd probably start 30 minutes prior to that. So from the time I get up, I put the bands on and then while I'm, you know, my morning routine, making coffee and things like that, I'm running cycles. So I would say at God. least 45 minutes before getting in the water, I'm running cycles. Wow. Very cool. So you're just totally incorporating Katsu into your lifestyle. As much as possible. Yeah. 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 Nice. nice. You do it all on your legs in the morning like that? Or you do yeah, any arms or I just go just all legs. to get your legs warmed up? Just because my legs, legs and core, that's where the, the, most of the work is coming from for, uh, for that, this kind of surfing that I do. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, uh, I just uh, put a slack line up in the, in the backyard. And I don't know if you've, you know, have you ever tried using a, an endo board or a goof board, you know, mm -hmm. one of those boards mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. the rolly underneath, um, you know, you're, you're constantly moving and you're yeah. constantly having to adjust like micro adjustments. If you do that cold, it's, it's a lot harder and you can end up, you know, pulling a muscle or whatever. The same thing goes in surfing. It's, you know, the consequences of, of standing up, you're just going to fall in the water, but you can only fall so many times before you're too tired to continue standing. So if I can get myself warmed up and ready to go to do, to, to really work those micro muscles and those quick, quick twitch, um, adjustable mm -hmm. muscles, you know, early on before I even get in the water, better for me. I can get more waves. I have a lot more fun and I don't look like a big goof just falling off my board all the time. The, the uh, cool points matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I've also seen you like really get after it. Just put them on your arms and doing some bicep curls, tricep extensions. I mean, you know, you also use it for other things. I do. I do. I, I use it all the time. I use it in, you know, my, my daily workouts. Um, so when I first, I wish I would have known about Katsu before, long before. Um, I'd say in 2010, I, I tore my bicep. I don't know if you can really see oh, the oh, yeah. cool little scar there. Yep. But, uh, I tore my bicep and for many years, um, I, at, even after the surgery, I wasn't really able to um, do the things that I can do now. But after I got Katsu and I started working Katsu, um, you know, there's more blood that's going to, there's, there's been some healing, even though there's been some, some tearing of that bicep uh, post-surgical, post-surgery. Um, I've, I've got MRIs that say, yeah, you know, the, the tendon is, the new tendon, that they screwed into my arm is actually separating from the bone again. Um, but since, uh, you know, I think I've been doing Katsu for about almost two years now. Um, I didn't do it quite as much in the beginning as I did once the, uh, the, the cycle 2.0 came out. I use that thing every day. It's just so easy to use. You strap it on. Yeah. You know, put the fans on and go. I love that thing. Um, but, uh, you know, now that I've, you know, I'm much more engaged in using it on a daily basis. I, I couldn't do pull-ups before. Now I can do, I can do pull-ups with the bands on. Oh. Um, so it has greatly improved the quality of my life, the quality of my training. Um, but, you know, I, I use it all the time. And, you know, once, so I went back on, on your website and started doing, you know, kind of a deep dive into the studies. I mean, I want to get the most benefit out of, out of this product. And so I just went and read through as many of the case studies as I could. Um, and then just kind of wrote down some of the exercises that, that, you know, they were doing, um, where they got the most amount of benefit. And so I just started incorporating those exercises into my, into my daily routine, into my workouts, whether I'm, you know, lifting weights, um, or, you know, and I really want to, uh, I want to engage as many of the fast switch muscle fibers as I can, um, for, for a whole body, because where I generally work out is, you know, they have, you know, the max, it's kind of like a, a fancy hotel gym. They've got a lot of like, um, like Nautilus kind of equipment, but I, I like, you know, much more, you know, free weights 
Um, and there's no like uh, barbell. There's only just like 50 pound dumbbells. So I will, you know, I'll take those and I'll do, you know, a hundred, you know, bench press, you know, sets of 30 or 40 or whatever I can. Um, and legs and, and squats and lunges and, and things like that. Or I'll superset other exercises in with just rubber bands. And you wouldn't believe how much <laughs> the, the pain of just using very lightweight rubber bands will bring to your entire body. Um, so, and to really like put the body in shock. And I'm not really sore, that sore the, the following day. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I really uh, like the product. I, I think that everyone should be using this product. Yeah. And you, you also teach and, and share Katsu with people there on Oahu, correct? Of, of I do. I, I share it with people here on, on Oahu. I also do um, like Zoom FaceTime classes with people, um, you know, from all, all ranges of, uh, you know, kind of elderly uh, that have some, uh, medical issues to, you know, very fit people that just want to be a little bit more fit. Got it. Uh, do you, uh, there on Oahu, when you work with those people, you ever go on the sand? What, what, what tools do you use? What equipment? Or you're just doing body weight stuff with, uh, body weight stuff. So on the sand, you know, really it's just like, uh, wear the bands on your legs and, and just go for a nice leisurely walk on the beach and you yeah. very quickly don't want a whole lot of uh, pressure a whole lot of pressure in those bands yeah yeah wow oh have there been some uh 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 clients that you have that might have a difficult like uh you know a broken bone or a you know they're going through some issues or, or you know what are some challenging uh clients that you may have that that you said hey try this katsu and, and somehow it it work for them or or everybody comes to you fairly fit and uh no, there's been some uh, some autoimmune issues. Um, I'm, I know that we've had some some people that have had some some other challenges. Um, I actually have one uh, a client that is actually in Mississippi, uh, where uh, her husband has um, just had like I don't know like major spinal uh fusion like i don't know four vertebra all kind of fused together or something it was a two-day process and so we're putting the bands on him to help you know stimulate the human growth hormone um to kind of speed up that that healing process of uh of the surgery oh nice nice john you have something no i was just a uh, the, the 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 spinal fusion i have somebody that very similar scenario and um yeah it's 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 great when because they'll do they'll do a lot of uh stuff with the leg bands in the cycle mode and they'll just do really really uh minor lower extremity movement but yeah. they love it they love it because they feel like they're getting a workout and as you mentioned, Will, I mean, the science, it kind of plays out with the science. You got all these uh, supporting metabolites and hormonal response to exercise. And, and that's what they're doing, even if they're not moving their legs that much, which is just so cool, especially with somebody coming off a, a back surgery because they're just right. so incapacitated. It's just like nothing. They're going they nowhere fast. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. No, it's, it's good. And then, um, well, you have, uh, you're running a company now, Naked uh, Warrior Recovery. Yes, sir. Can you tell us about that? So Naked Warrior Recovery is, uh, I appreciate the shout out, um, is a, a CBD supplement company, but we also sell Katsu through that, through, through my company. Um, and really it's focused on the recovery of veterans and first responders from traumatic events. So CBD has been, I can't make any medical claims in any way, um, however, uh, I can tell you that CBD has helped me overcome uh, some depression, some anxiety, PTSD, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I've gotten uh, unexpected uh, um, benefits of less joint pain. And some of this is also probably from Katsu as well, but, um, you know, less joint pain, 
less migraines. Um, I definitely have better sleep at night. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I had heard about this, just this magical uh, cannabis uh, molecule that, you know, was not THC before CBD became very cool. And, uh, and I was like, oh, I, I would like to try that. But, you know, I'm still in the military. I have my top secret clearance. I want to retire with, a, you know, um, and not get kicked out. <laughs> so that's, uh, that, that was important to me. So I, you know, about a year ago in June, uh, a buddy, you know, said, here's some CBD if you want to try it. And so I tried it. And immediately I was like, I was not living in this red zone anymore. I like went from like red zone to like a bright orange. So I was able to do like good positive self-talk and like have less of a bad attitude. I was less angry. Um, and then over time I was like, you know, I went from like bright orange to regular orange down to yellow. And so now I'm able to like actually, you know, have a, a an, an actual opinion instead of just being angry. Um, and some second and third order effects that happened at the same time is like joint pain became increasingly less. Um, I would go to like do something and I would, I know that this is going to hurt because it always does. And I'm already like cringing from the, for the pain and there's no pain there. I'm like, Oh, that was cool. And then I stopped taking CBD because I ran out of the bottle and then <laughs> stuff started coming back. And I was like, Oh, this is not good. Maybe there's something to this. I didn't really tie the two together. And then I found an opportunity to start my own company because I received such great benefits from it. And now I want to share those benefits with as many people as possible. Great. Do you have a website? Kind of like what you guys are doing with yeah. Katsu because I got great benefits from Katsu as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a website where people can I do. Uh, reach out to you? Uh, my website is nw-recovery.com. Uh, NW stands for naked warrior because, uh, this is actually my shirt, the logo. Oh, nice. So um, our history in the SEAL teams is uh, back in World War II, if you guys remember the, uh, the movie Saving Private Ryan, you know, the beginning of that where, you know, the, the landing force is taking over the beach. Uh, prior to those guys going over the beach, the Navy uh, asked for volunteers for people to come and survey, like swim in, survey the beach, and then if there are any obstacles to go in and, and blow up the obstacles. So Normandy was the first time that that unit was used. And then they created the capability for the Pacific because, you know, the, the island campaign of the Pacific during World War II, there's all these barrier reefs around. And, you know, Marines and Army guys are running off the ships and they're like running across the, the reefs. And then they, you know, then they end up, you know, the reef, they thought they were in like knee deep water. And really there's like 30 feet of water on the other side of that reef. And then they go and drown. So they brought these guys in, these, these underwater demolition teams, the naked warriors. Uh, they would just go in with like a pair of swim trunks, a K-bar knife, a slate around their neck where they took notes and a rock tied to a piece of string with knots every six feet to measure the depth of the water. And they would measure, they would go in and do surveys on beaches uh, for three to 5,000 yards a night. They would come back, take notes, draw uh, uh, basically an underwater chart of what the water looked like, where the obstacles were. And then the next day before the assault force launched, they would go in and and blow up the obstacles in the water, blow holes in the reefs so the assault force could come in and you know, win the island campaign. So that's the history of the naked warrior. The other side of that is you know, for us to have you know, true healing from PTSD or whatever, uh, sort of traumatic events, you know, mental, physical, emotional, we are, we're always wearing our armor. We always have this ironclad, like, I'm untouchable, you can't hurt me, I'm not affected by this. At some point, we have to actually take that armor off and expose ourselves and be naked, and we're all warriors, and be naked in order to start that healing process. So that's the other side of, of the naked warrior recovery. Um, one is a little bit of my history um, and John's history, but the other side is you have to like, you have to actually get naked and expose yourself in order to start that healing process. Wow! Yeah, let that let that facade, let that armor down a little bit. So exactly. You can heal. Yeah, that's cool. Wow! That what, because just, you know in combat you're always you you go out the door you're wearing armor and when you come back you take it off you recover you get ready for the next mission. If you're always wearing that armor you're just going to continue to get weighed down more and more 
with all the stress and all the anxiety and you're never able to truly recover to become the person that you actually are or the warrior that you actually are. So. Wow. I, just going back, why did you uh, choose to become a SEAL? What was your uh, goal? And I was a, let's see, I was a Boy Scout. I was an Eagle Scout. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to be in the military. I just didn't, I'd never heard of a Navy SEAL. Um, there was a Navy base in my town in, in Meridian, Mississippi. And I was like, I will not join in the Navy. Those guys are weird. <laughs> they have this weird dunkery uniform with bell bottoms that they wear. Absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, maybe I'll be an army ranger or, you know, something like that. And then uh, some, I, you know, while in the scouts, uh, a, and then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll be a, like an F-14 pilot because Top Gun came out and that was a really cool movie. Um, but at, I remember at a, at a campfire during our summer camp, a Navy pilot came out and uh, he talked about being in the military and discipline and all this other stuff. And um, afterwards, a couple of us talked to the guy and, you know, he said, you know, if you really want to be a part of special forces, you should be a Navy SEAL. Because there was a guy in my OCS class who was a SEAL. And, you know, that guy was unstoppable. He would, um, you know, if the class got in trouble or he got in trouble, the drill instructor would take him outside and have him do eight count bodybuilders for an hour. And he'd come back in and he was sweat, not even like sweating or, or breathing hard. I was like, that's what I want to be. <laughs> and you know, I loved the water. I was uh, I was a lifeguard there, at, at, and I taught swimming and life saving and all this other stuff. I also worked at the rifle range at the as a as a, a young uh, Boy Scout instructor. Um, you know, and so it was like all the things that I ever wanted to be and wanted to do. So um, like that, that's just a natural fit for me. Wow. So when as did a, you enlist? As a young man. What age did you enlist? Um, I enlisted between my uh i don't know junior and senior year of high school so okay. six, 17 years old wow. um in the delayed entry program so i enlisted and then i finished uh my 12th grade year of high school and then i went to boot camp and, and joined the navy got it and, and away i went yeah can you approximate how many countries have you visited in your career uh, that's funny <laughs> um someone uh recently you know, said how, how many countries they had been to, or they needed a couple more to, you know, to figure out, you know, they were, they would have gone to 40 different countries. And so I was like, Hmm, that's a good, uh, that's a good exercise. Let me figure it out. So I just opened up a map. And I was like, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. 42 countries I've been to. Oh, wow. And then, and still going. So yes. excellent. But you found your home in Hawaii. It's home for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's a reason to move, I will just, we'll stay here. Yeah. yeah. There's worse places to live for sure. Yeah. yeah. John, do you have any last questions? Uh, no, just that uh, sometimes I wish I was out in Kailua uh, with <laughs> Will as, as well. I, I, I miss those days, man. It was, You're always welcome living. to come visit. Uh, I might, I might very well, uh, might very well do that. Well, I guess just from the Katsu uh, side, it seems like if I were to just encapsulate, kind of capture the primary way you use it is uh, for warming up muscle tissue before intense or heavy use. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, but I also use it for heavy use exercises as well. I mean, I want to lift heavy weights just because my background and it's also a, it's a different skill set. Um, but because of the, where I work out and the, the gyms that I have uh, access to, I don't have that option. So I'm using Katsu to help me uh, recruit those type two fast twitch muscle fibers um, so that when I do have the opportunity to lift heavy weights, I won't be behind the power curve. So I'm still getting the benefits of lifting heavy weights. And then when I do get the opportunity to lift heavy, I, you know, I won't be, uh, I won't hopefully not hurt myself. 
Yeah, I, those, those, it's a great point that you made earlier, and I just want to jump back to it before we finish up here. But it, to me, it's so important. You mentioned um, not having to work with heavy weights and still get that same kind of uh, outcome uh, metabolically, hormonally, or whatever. Um, do, do you find that because you're not moving heavy weights, that you don't get as much of this, uh, you'll hear guys talk about the inflammation response or delayed onset muscle soreness and stuff like that. Um, do you get sore when you go hard with, uh, with Katsu with, with not, no way? Not generally, no. The only time that I really get sore is, um, when I have the leg band is generally maxed out because I like to go hard right. and heavy. Right. And if I'm doing deadlifts <laughs> and I can do air deadlifts, like not eat, no weight and just really just engage my glutes on the way up and on the way down that eccentric, I guess is the, the right word. Okay. Um, exercise of just, really engaging it and, and mentally um, imagining that I'm lifting like 400 pounds of, you know, deadlift bar. And I, you know, I do several sets. I do have uh, soreness of my glutes. Um, but I think that's probably expected because I am working them in a, and stretching them in a, in a, a way that they're not normally worked or stretched. And I don't do right. a lot of that because right. Ooh. And you're doing that with just a bar or nothing? No, oh. no weight. Or I might uh, use nothing. like, or I might use like uh, 35 pound kettlebells, like two of those. So that's 70 pounds, maybe. Yeah, but a lot different from the days of the uh, 400 pound deadlifts that you used. To right. Do. Or the or <laughs> or I might even use like uh, like a heavy rubber band, even. Right. Right. Just to have a little bit of resistance to to for my body to to know that there's resistance there and to work against. But really, I, I've done it, you know, with no weights at all. Uh, but that's the only time that I think I've ever been sore God. using katsu. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm working. I'm like sweating when I'm <laughs> finishing. So it's not, uh, yeah. Will, do you do any um, katsu for your core, lower back, any specific exercise for that? Um, I don't know if an exercise that I do like doing with Katsu is, I call it, it's a uh, one-legged, uh, one-legged sit down and get ups. You know, I basically yeah. just have a chair there and I extend one leg out and I, oh. and I stand up and sit down with one leg. That's an amazing amount of core work that yeah. takes place there. I'm not necessarily doing core work but that i'm working to just like to stand up with one leg and then you know hold this the other leg out and then sit back down and try to like do it as controlled as possible yeah. so um and then switch leg i'll, I'll do 10 on one side and then 10 on the other um and then just do that for five sets wow. and you know it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of core work, but I, you know, and I guess that's probably the exercise that sticks out as where I'm really engaging the most amount of my core with Katsu. Yeah. Oh, wow. Any other, uh, those kind of unusual or unique exercises that you do? Um, I think really for the, for the most part, I don't lift a lot of heavy weight, but I, but you know, I get the truly get the benefits of lifting heavy because you know my arms have never looked better. Uh, my chest is never. I think I'm like I'm in as good a shape. I have more muscle mass now than I did prior to using katsu, even lifting you know lifting free weights. Um, interestingly enough, kind of weird. That's kind of crazy if you think about what you just said. Yeah, I mean, it is. You, you spent 26 years in, you know, tip of the spear, elite fighting force of America, Navy SEALs and all that. And you're sitting here as a retired guy that doesn't push heavy weights, saying you have more muscle mass 
than you ever did when you're in your teens. Is that, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty fact. significant statement and kind of gets to what Dr. Sato's life's work is, uh, <laughs> it's all been about, man. It's, that's I mean, it's, cool. it's work. You don't just get it. You got to work. For right, it. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, you know, I'm not lifting. I'm not doing like 315 on the bench. I'm doing 50 pounds, 50 pound dumbbells. And sometimes I can't even make, make it all the way through the workout with that. And I have to drop and go to like 45s or 40s. Um, so. Oh, this, this is cool. Uh, what kind of pressures do you normally use? I know it pressure is different for everybody, but. Just yeah, uh, mostly I just go all the way up. Okay. I'll do like, you know, the high cycle to the top okay. as my warm up. Right. Um, I know that I probably shouldn't. And I recommend people not do that. Don't do, yeah. do as I say, not as I do. Um, but just because I'm kind of in a hurry uh, yeah. with my time. And I, and I do it a lot. Yeah. So I don't feel uncomfortable um, starting high and then going. I've started to like start a little lower and work my way up. But uh, usually I, I start off pretty high, kind of like what you were, uh, Stephen, what you were talking about the other day in that, uh, in that uh, Zoom call where you said Dr. Sato, his, his base pressure is generally around 70 yeah. SPUs or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's serious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but feel he, so bad about starting kind of high now. Yeah, yeah. Well, he took 50 years to get to that point. So. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I, I'd like to just spend a whole hour or two or three just talking about military history that that you just had <laughs> uh, just on the naked warrior recovery that was that was really really interesting too yeah thank you that was yeah i mean i'm i'm proud of my history i'm you know um yeah i think it's i think it's very cool and i'm and i'm proud to be a part of that heritage uh of these guys that were just you know they were told at you know 18 years old, leave home and then let's go to war. And you're going to war for the next four years. You're not going home. And while they're out there, they just figured it out and you know they problem solved and they you know did things. They were you know and they were the, the most decorated Navy unit in in the entire war. Um. So, you know and and you know that was the catalyst for what we have today is really for special operations. So. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm just proud to be a, a part of, I'm humbled to be a part of, you know, that entire history yeah. that, uh, that we have. Yeah. And your design is, is very, uh, it sort of, sort of looks like me, like a, a mix between a Michigan state Spartan and a Hawaiian warrior <laughs> kind of, uh, uh, theme. It's the, it's, it's the guy with this mask on his head. You know, yeah. if you ever did that in SEAL training, they would, you <laughs> You know, punish you pretty badly, down. but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of Jacques Cousteau style. Yeah. Uh, okay. And your email, if people want to reach out and uh, contact. Uh, you can reach out to me at William at NW dash recovery dot com. Uh, thank you very much. Oh man, this has been a, a really pleasant time for me to listen to your background and and, and your future going forward. Awesome. Well, and we'll, you we'll put your information on the Katsu blog as well, especially your website, nw-recovery.com. Uh, and we'll put your contact info on there and uh, recording of this so we can uh, kind of push it out. A lot of people can see it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Aloha. All right. See you guys later.